Uh, welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be discussing the process of formation of ova, what we call oogenesis. It's one of the pre-fertilization events uh, in this series. So the site where oogenesis occurs is within the ovary, specifically within the ovarian cortex. Now the source is the primordial germ cells which come from the yolk sac and migrate to the indifferent gonad which now will mature and form the ovary and so these primordial germ cells will differentiate and form the ugonia which undergo mitotic division to form the primary oocytes so the primary oocytes are identified by having uh, follicular cells and uh, zona pellucida formation and so here you can be able to see the primary oocyte and this is the zona pellucida and then you have the follicular cells okay what we call them the zona granulosa so the zona pellucida is very important it's uh, its name comes from the latin term that roughly translates as the transparent zone okay so pellucid means transparent zona zone so the transparent zone it's an extracellular uh, membrane and it's very important in that it allows only one sperm to get to the oocyte and once one sperm goes in it uh, causes what we call the zona reaction that prevents any uh, other sperm from going in so it prevents what we call poly spamming so it prevents the multiple fertilization of one over with multiple sperms which will mess up the uh, restoration of diploid stage. Now, the other important uh, role is that the zona pellucida acts as an extracellular uh, matrix, okay, that protects uh, the oocyte while it's within the fallopian tube. The other thing is that it has uh, specific proteins, okay, which are known as uh, ZP1, 2, 3, so zona pellucida protein 1, 2, 3, like that. And so those proteins tend to be specific to a species, which means that you cannot have a fertilization of an oocyte with a species uh, that is different. So, for example, uh, you cannot have uh, the, the sperm from a whale uh, fertilizing a human oocyte, okay, because of the zona pellucida protein. Now, remember the head of the spermatozoa also has receptors that uh, will correspond okay and so those receptors are usually covered by a glycoprotein coat what we called decapacitation in the previous video on spermatogenesis and so it's the process of capacitation that reveals these uh, receptors when you remove the glycoprotein coat and so those receptors have to be complement with the zona pellucida proteins and that maintains species specificity so the primary oocyte will undergo the first meiotic division, which is arrested at prophase. So this usually happens around birth, and it, it takes many years until puberty kicks in. Then there'll be cyclic completion at ovulation. So when, when ovulation occurs, there's completion of first meiosis. Then you form the secondary oocyte, which is then arrested at the second meiotic uh, phase. So this is usually at metaphase. So during second meiosis at metaphase, you have the second arrest. Now it takes uh, the process of fertilization to allow the completion of second meiosis to form the mature ovum. And so once that process occurs, usually uh, remember there'll be uh, the zona reaction once the sperm goes in. Uh, so this layer of cells here will first have to be dispersed by the acrosomal uh, enzymes okay so you have the mature ovum that is formed and so here remember what you are forming is the secondary oocyte okay so this is the secondary oocyte then you have the zona pellucida then you have the corona radiata okay so it's the radiating crown, corona radiata. It's just the same layer of cells, these follicular cells, that is uh, around the uh, secondary oocyte. 
Now, this is the cumulus of us. Basically, it just means a cloud of cells around the, the uh, oocyte. Then you have the layer of granulosa cells here. Then you have what you call the follicular antrum. Now, this follicular antrum is very important in the concept of ovulation because the follicular antrum contains follicular fluid. Now, follicular fluid is uh, maximally produced at ovulation. So, at ovulation, what we usually have is there's a, there's a surge of a hormone known as luteinizing hormone that causes an increase in the production of the follicular fluid called the liquor folliculi. So, it's the increase in this intrafollicular pressure that pushes this uh, secondary oocyte outside okay, the ovary and into the fallopian tube which completes the process of ovulation. Then the last one is the fecal interna. This layer of cells is very important because this is where you have endocrine functions occurring. So usually what happens is outside this uh, fecal interna there is a fecal externa which produces androgens. Then the fecal interna contains an enzyme known as aromatase. So it converts the androgens into estrogens. And it's the high levels of estradiol that actually uh, determines which uh, follicle will undergo ovulation. So let's have some review questions and summarize these pre-fertilization events. So this is a, basically a marathon uh, question, uh, picture question. So you can be asked to identify the organ. So basically, this, remember this is the ovary and specifically within the ovarian cortex. That is where you have this series of follicles. You can see you have different levels of follicles, primordial, primary, secondary follicles. Then you have the mature, okay? Remember the mature follicle has this large follicular antrum. Eh? Then two cell types. So remember the thicker interna, okay? Which uh, is endocrine. And then the oocyte itself uh, participates in uh, gametogenesis. So the ovulated oocyte is arrested at metaphase 2. Remember ovulation completes the first meiosis. So you enter into second meiosis. So in the second meiotic uh, phase, at metaphase, that is where you have the secondary arrest. The following statement is incorrect about the zona pellucida. It is a specialized intracellular matrix. Remember it is extracellular. It is an extracellular matrix. The second meiotic arrest uh, occurs uh, during ovulation. So once you ovulate, you complete this, the first meiotic division and enter to second meiotic division. And that is when the arrest occurs at metaphase. So the hormone produced by the pituitary gland to cause ovulation is the luteinizing hormone. Capacitation of the sperm is essential for fertilization. Remember, Capacitation is removal of the glycoprotein coat from the head of the sperm. And that is what reveals the receptors that will target the uh, ovum. So during S phase, that is when you have DNA replication occurring. Now decapacitation is a process that occurs within the epididymis. So mature spermatozoa will be viable uh, within the epididymis for about 10 weeks. During mitosis, the number of chromosomes is doubled and the proteolytic enzymes will be found within the acrosome. So functions of the ovary, we divide them into endocrine and exocrine. Endocrine, you have the production of hormones, so estrogen, progesterone, and then exocrine is basically the formation of the uh, oocyte. So this is what you call a sacrococcygeal teratoma and it is, uh, occurs during the pre-fertilization events. So it's what we know, uh, what we call a germ cell tumor. So the germ means germinating. Okay, so these are the regenerative cells uh, that will form the sperm and the ovum. And so these tumors arise when you have failure of migration of uh, these uh, primordial germ cells from the yolk sac endoderm to the urogenital ridge. And so if they fail to migrate, they usually get uh, stuck within the wall of the yolk sac. And so they, they grow into tumors of multiple cell lines. 
so they can form anything from ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. So the cell types involved, this is mitotic division, this is meiotic division, and so meiotic division occurs in the germ cells, okay, the gametes, that is the sperm or the ovum, and then mitotic division occurs within the somatic cells. Under the light microscope, the zona pellucida appears as a translucent membrane which surrounds all the above. So that it surrounds the primary oocyte, the zygote, the morula, and the very early blastocyst. Okay, so it only dissolves during the blastocyst, the, the late blastocyst stage, so that implantation can occur. So the loss of the zona pellucida is a process we call hatching. Okay, and so that hatching is what causes or allows for implantation to occur. So two functions of the Sertoli cells in spermatogenesis. One is spermiogenesis, which is uh, during spermiogenesis, the Sertoli cells will phagocytose excess cytoplasm from the spermatid. Then it also uh, under the it also uh, produces what we call androgen binding protein. This is under the influence of FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone. So FSH stimulates Sertoli cells to form androgen binding protein which helps to concentrate testosterone that drives spermatogenesis. Now, testosterone levels within the testes after puberty usually goes up to 20 times that uh, the, the levels you find within the normal uh, plasma within uh, man. So that high level of testosterone is what drives spermatogenesis. And so it is this androgen binding protein that allows the high concentration of testosterone. So hormones involved in sperm cell maturation, so this will be the follicle stimulating hormone and testosterone. The structure changes that occur during spermiogenesis, so you have the formation of the acrosome, so this is from the Golgi apparatus, the condensation of the nucleus, so you have the dense uh, chromatin, then the neck, middle and tail piece of the neck are formed, and then the process of phagocytosis of the cytoplasm by Sertoli cells. So during uh, G2 at M phase, that is when the chromosomes are already double. So remember the S phase is where you have doubling of the DNA or DNA replication. And so the phase after S is G2 and then M. The main volume of the seminal fluid comes from the seminal vesicles. So usually what happens is the semen that uh, you ejaculate, 60% of that fluid comes from the seminal vesicle, 30% from the prostate, around 5% to around 8% comes from the bulbourethral glands or the corpus glands. And then roughly 1-2% to is sperm. So the main factor that assists the travel of sperms towards the fallopian tube is the smooth con construction of the uterus and the fallopian tube okay and so that is a concept that we'll talk about in the female reproductive tract and this usually comes about because of uh, the female uh, orgasm that causes smooth muscle uh, contraction so acidity within the vagina will actually not promote so you will tend to prefer more of an alkaline environment that allows movement of sperms and uh, basically uh, fluid current, ciliary activity will be secondary factors. So a condition essential for the completion of the second meiotic division during eugenesis is fertilization. So the site of maturation of the sperms is within the epididymis. And the primordial germ cells originate from the wall of the yolk sac. So the following statements concerning spermatogenesis is true. The Sertoli cells phagocytose excess cytoplasm from the sperms. That is true. So thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, you can leave them on the comment section below.